Joining us live via Skype to do a comparison of approaches to lockdown in Nigeria and the UK is Dr. Charles Omole, international lawyer and political strategist. Thank you, doctor, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Great. Now, by way of comparison, we, we seem to be recording more cases currently in Nigeria, with the recent one being 245. What would you say the government is not getting right or doing right back home right here in Nigeria before we come to the UK? Well, I mean, to, to make it clear, I mean, the government is between the rock and the hard place here in terms of um, decision, you know, to make in terms of whether to live in lockdown or not. But when I was reading, when I was doing some research about this, um, the key lesson I feel the government can learn in Nigeria very quickly is if you look at the case of Ebola, when we had many few years back, when we had Ebola ravaging many countries in West Africa, the number one thing that bore down, that allowed Ebola to be conquered in those countries was massive sensitization and reorientation of the communities. Because what was happening in, in, during Ebola was that people were hiding their sick family members because they didn't trust the system or all kinds of rumors were going on as to what, you know, what actually what, you know, was going on. Some did not believe Ebola existed. So a massive community information campaign started. A lot more people began to be open about it, and that was what allowed Ebola to be conquered. Same thing is happening here in terms of uh, COVID-19. You have lots of people, some don't believe uh, COVID-19 exists. Some do believe it exists. Some don't trust the government. All kinds of issues going on. And I would say in this regard, Lagos State Government is doing something right here in terms of their mass information and sensitization with Nigeria as a whole. I don't think the federal government is doing sufficiently in terms of that area. All you have to do is look at Kano and the North, and you can see what misinformation, uh, what damage that can and will do uh, now that the lockdown has been lifted. It seems to be the UK government seems hesitant to, to commit to a date as concerns the easing of lockdown restrictions and eventually facing out of the lockdown. What are the key considerations? Well, I mean, in terms of the UK government, uh, they feel they still have some time because what's happened is if you are an employee in the UK or if you are self-employed, uh, government has made financial provisions to pay those people 80% of what they would normally earn till the end of June. So as far as the government of the UK is concerned, they are paying you to stay at home till the end of June. So uh, they are not in a hurry, so to speak, in that sense, because... Financially, they are, they are already committed to meeting people's financial needs till the end of June. So that's the window they feel they have uh, to act. And the difference also here is the fact that uh, 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 the cases of COVID-19 is, uh, uh, is now being more controlled in the United, in the United Kingdom um, in terms of uh, um, the loss of hospital facilities, additional facilities and bedroom, bed spaces that were created as, that have not been used at all because the projection in terms of number of uh, infection has not materialized. So the, the lockdown is, is it lockdown work as a system when majority of the people obeyed. So in all the countries worldwide where lockdown worked, people have more or less been incentivized financially to stay at home. In all of Africa, lockdown hasn't worked. You know, the problem we have in Nigeria, we have it in Kenya, we have it in South Africa, we have it, you know, in, in, in many other places in, across Africa where poverty is strong. So, 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 so poverty, uh, I mean, makes people to make a decision between surviving, you know, uh, 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 in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, having food to eat or a possible COVID infection and people will choose to survive uh, uh, regardless of the risk involved. Now, still on the UK, with the large numbers of deaths experienced in the UK, how is the NHS coping with this burden? Well, I mean, that's the good thing that the lockdown has done in terms of helping the NHS to reduce the, so that NHS was not overloaded. The whole idea of, a, you know, one of the objectives, which is of the lockdown, was to reduce the cases so that the NHS is not overloaded. But I must say this, though. The reason why the NHS has not been overloaded so far is because all non-urgent medical conditions, uh, cancer screening, several other things have been postponed for months. So NHS is now more or less dealing with mainly COVID-19 cases, 
and other emergency life-threatening conditions. So, but there are so many other ailments that are not being treated at the moment, which, of course, is a problem because it means once the lockdown is down, you know, NHF could still have a problem because they will, at that time, they will be dealing with both COVID-19 cases, even though on a reduced basis, as well as the deluge of other medical conditions that have not, uh, that they've kept, uh, you know, uh, at bay for the past few, uh, several weeks. Now, still by way of comparison between the UK and Nigeria, you did mention while you were speaking how um, UK citizens were incentivized by the, the government. What do you think the Nigerian government yes. could take away from that? Well, I mean, one thing is that you cannot quarantine inequality. Nigerian government needs to understand that, uh, you know, I, mean, I was reading somewhere, uh, you know, yesterday that some Nigerians actually, you know, don't, some Nigerian minority don't really care much about COVID because they feel it's a rich man's disease because mainly all the names they've been hearing of people who have been dying from it are in quote prominent people. So, so, so more or less, you know, some Nigerians are seen as karma. That, okay, all these rich people, let's COVID take that. But they don't understand that COVID doesn't discriminate in that sense. So the, one of the key lessons, the, you know, I think the, the point here is Nigerian government needs to understand that there's so many, you know, caring for the people and trust deficit between government and Nigerians is a major problem. You see, if the people don't trust the government, a lot of things will happen that people will, you know, take, you know, their lives into their hands. You know, so, so there are all kinds of issues around, um, you know, COVID-19 uh, that makes Nigerians uh, 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 not to trust the government. Some of them are historical. So COVID-19 is just exemplifying it. So, the, so number one thing is massive information campaign. Number two, a, a more people-oriented governance needs to be instituted in Nigeria. I mean, uh, it's, it doesn't help that all our prominent people in Nigeria, anytime they are, I'm talking of uh, politicians now. Anytime they, are, they have any minor ailment, they fly out of the country. So they are telling Nigerians, your healthcare system here is not good enough for me. So, 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 so if it's not good enough for you, why, why should it be good enough for us? So there's a lot of um, uh, 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 you know, grounds that I think the government of Nigeria needs to make up in, in, in increasing the trust between Nigerians and the government. Uh, finally, Doctor, what is the strategy from the medical point of view towards containment and management of infected people? And also in the UK, and draw the comparison right here at home in Nigeria. Well, I mean, the key thing is that in the UK, I mean, uh, the government has ramped up testing. So there's a lot more testing now. Um, you know, uh, and, um, you know, and I think in Nigeria, part of it, what needs to happen is not only do we need to have more testing, we need to have speedy testing. You know, taking people's samples and not getting back to them until several days later is not good enough. We need to have rapid testing and rapid results. You know, a lot of the things that is done here cannot effectively be done in Nigeria. I mean, social distancing, as people say, is a difficult thing, not just in Nigeria, in the whole of Africa. You know, so that is the key thing we need to bear in mind, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, about this. All right, Doctor, it's been a pleasure having you join us in News on the Hour, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.